Now, joining me on the big interview tonight is one of Northern Ireland's best loved actresses. We love her as Ma in Give My Head Peace, and she's also starring in a new movie which is out now called Grace and Goliath. Olivia Nash is here. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Thank you, Robin. So I suppose whenever anybody interviews you, the first two things they must still say to you is, number one, Fred, where's the bread? Uh -huh. And they ask you about being Ma. That's right. Yeah? Uh -huh. It'll never go away. No, it'll never go away, but I mean, uh Let's face it, <laughs> it was a big part of my career, <laughs> you know. No, I've, I've no bother with it at all. I mean, I'm quite proud. I'm proud of it and I'm proud to think that uh, the Northern Ireland people and beyond uh, recognise it and enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, well, I hope we're still enjoying Ma. Yeah, indeed. Well, we'll talk about Ma in a second. I want to talk to you about the new movie, which is out now, the Cine Magic movie, yes. Grace and Goliath. Tell us all about that. How did it come about? Well, um, I was invited uh, to go for audition and it uh, has been done by Cinemagic. I have always had great admiration and devotion to, to Cinemagic and uh, it's a beautiful part. You know, one of, you know one of those parts you just would be dying for? Yeah. And, uh, oh, I was hoping like anything <laughs> I would get it and I did. Yeah. It's a, a part of a little, of a granny uh, in Northern Ireland and she's called Lily and uh, the beautiful thing about Northern Ireland is Northern Ireland is full of these grannies yeah you know what I mean and she is like the well not the centerpiece of the film but, but really she's like the stalwart yes, you know, yeah. of the film and uh, it was great fun to do it really really was it has a beautiful story a really lovely story uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this but absolutely nothing to do with the troubles <laughs> and uh, um, but it's it's not a twee story in any yeah. way it's just everybody uh, will find something in it that they can associate with it's it's that type of film Okay. And this thing with great fun doing it. <laughs> well, we have a little clip of you oh. in action, which we're going to play right now. Movie. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. What's it going to be called? City of Trouble. City of Trouble. Nice. The studio is definitely out. Belfast rewriting the script for crying out loud. Hey! Come on, you can stay with us for the night. I mean, you'd rather spend the night with them ones. You guys eat the stuff? Oh, it's just what I had left in the freezer. I know a lot of people don't believe in me, but I will make this movie. I want the world to know about this crazy place. Who would like your autograph? No. Huh? Grace? How do you get that much money this quickly? What we could do a, a sponsored kiss-a-thon? Aye, I could pay to not kiss you. Mommy is a way of seeing through to people's hearts. Would it be all right? You're fired. Call from Lance's office. He wasn't a fan of the script. We will do everything we can. We'll take it from here. Josh, I love you. So, Olivia, in Grace and Goliath, you're playing a granny, as you said. You're a granny yourself in real life. Would you consider yourself a typical Northern Ireland granny? Oh, my grandchildren would say definitely no. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would love to be. I mean, I, I love being a granny. I have great pleasure in being a granny because I, I think it's a very... Uh, it's a wonderful position, you know, to, you know, to be in, that, uh, that you can... Uh, in some ways uh, spread your well, knowledge and 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 uh, you know that we weren't all dinosaurs you know <laughs> <laughs> in the old days as i say one of one of my grandchildren had a great habit of saying to me um they call me lala and he says lala in the olden days you know and i, I i'm sure as as we're saying this there'll be thousands mm -hmm. of grannies going mm -hmm, <laughs> in the olden days but uh, I'm very fortunate with my grandchildren in that they are very interested 
you know, uh, in in our background and and uh, and also, uh, you know, they although they pretend not to be, yeah. but they're very interested in what I do and very supportive. Yeah. Now, so that uh, so maybe I'm not the typical granny in that I I don't do some of the things that I should do, you know, yeah. and then I do things that maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> So taking you back to your childhood, Olivia, was um, acting something you always wanted to do? Did you always want to always dream about being on stage? Yes, I, 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 I yes, and no. I came to it in, in, in a, a peculiar sort of way, uh, in that I always, always, from my youngest day, I loved the films, and uh, my mother, uh, my, my father would have been away a lot because he was in the navy and um, uh, the merchant navy and various, and he was a chef. So I mean, his lifestyle. But my mother was a devoted uh, playgoer, and uh, I mean, she. I'm, I'm sure there's, there's hardly a play that my mother hadn't read, even just. So from we were uh, very young, my sister and I, because there was no daddy there, um, we were taken. I was taken along to things when I was about two and three year old, you know. Yes. Yeah. And because uh, so, the, the plays used to come round, and that was the days of Goldblatt and Margaret Darcy and all, and they travelled. And uh, I mean, I, I remember those, and I remember the magic of it. So possibly, yes, I was saying. Oh, you know, so when I I, um, I went to school, uh, I loved being in everything, you know, in the school, and um, then uh, unfortunately, uh, when I was a child, I had very bad asthma, okay. which I don't have now. Which I, I you can grow out of it, folks. Dear, love you, anybody who has it. Um, so I missed an awful lot of school. Really, we're talking months and at one time a year. So I find it. Uh, I found it quite difficult, you know, going back in again, because in those days where we are, imagine we're good teachers, but uh, it wasn't like now where a child would be uh, taken through, uh, you know, in my day, you walked back in and you sat down. And uh, so I, I suppose I was always very talkative and uh, still am. <laughs> and uh, with the result, I was bullied. Right. And uh, I didn't realise I was being it was that sort of thing and I find uh, how I could escape this bullying was by making people laugh right yeah so that's a very long way of telling you how I I came around and then uh, it was just lovely and then when I went away to boarding school I was in all the you know we had brilliant plays there you know cast of thousands and uh, then I got a I had a scholarship uh, then to RADA but I was only um, I was not quite 16 okay. and uh, I mean in those days uh, London was this enormous fabulous place but I mean we had nobody living there or, and I would have had to have you know gone and lived and so mummy and daddy decided uh, that it, it it wasn't for me and I remember being terribly dramatic about it and all oh, here but actually I was relieved yes, you know yeah. because I would have been, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done well there I don't think uh, you know, but it, it was wonderful to be uh, offered it. So then how did you start picking up stage bits here in Belfast? Because you got lots of work with uh, the late great James Young, didn't you? I did. Uh, I went through the amateur world, of which I'm very proud. And uh, I belonged to Lauren Drama, I still belong to Lauren Drama Circle. And in those days, uh, we did an awful lot of the AUDF uh, uh, festivals, yeah. which are, are, are still going very strong. And uh, once again, I was very fortunate quite a few times uh, to pick up the uh, best actress and, and things like that. And uh, on one occasion, uh, we were in um, the opera. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's funny saying that. We always called it getting to the opera house. Right. Because that's where the finals would always have been. Yeah. But then the Pearl Opera House was in bits so many times that although we were maybe in the county hall in Ballymena, we still talked about getting to the Opera yes. House. Yeah. So uh, on this particular occasion, I, I won it again. And uh, ja er, Jimmy Young and Hubie Wilmot of the Arts Theatre mm -hmm. were in the audience and I, I was unaware and they both wrote to me and invited me to come for audition and that is that is literally how, how it started and uh, I 
I mean, Hibby was wonderful, a, a, a terrific man. I, I, I never got to really know him awfully yeah. well, but I just had this thing about Jimmy Young, and uh, I was right because uh, Jimmy, I, I learned more with Jimmy Young than I ever would have learned at Rada. Yes, I would have maybe learned, trying to learn how to dance or something like that there, but uh, people on occasion have remarked in my sense of timing, yeah. all of that is completely and utterly James Young. Was he hard to work with? Was he a perfectionist in yes. that sense? Yes. Yeah. He wasn't hard to work for, but he was a perfectionist. Yeah. And the other thing, let's face it, you had to always remember, it was Jimmy's show. Yes, yeah. You know, now it wasn't like Jimmy Logan that the lights came up two or three notches, yeah. you know, when he came on. But it was his, and uh, you uh, had to be dead on the button with lines and uh, a, a, a peculiar, a funny thing he used to do, wasn't funny at all. <laughs> was in every uh, play, you know, when you were reading it. And, and uh, I'll tell you about that in a wee minute, but when, when you would have been reading through, you'd have been thinking, oh gosh, there's where he's going to go. And there always would have been perhaps a speech of his, maybe about four lines, yeah. but it was the area where he, if there was anything, uh, you know, on, you know, local or anything like that there, and the news around like that, that's where it would have gone in. Right, yes. And you used to pray that you didn't have the speech afterwards <laughs> because he always gave you, now he always gave you your cue line, but if you had been standing like a goldfish going, you know, yeah, thinking yeah. you were getting in now, oh, he would have gone, really, it was the one thing that put him mad. Uh, so th as I say, you listened yeah. <laughs> carefully, <laughs> you know, but he was, uh, no, I, I didn't find him, uh, I, I, he was very good to me. And I, I find he was a gosh, he was a businessman. Yes, yeah. No question of that. Yeah. My pay, uh, whenever I joined the group theatre, uh, my pay was three pound a week, <laughs> 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 and you had to live within a five mile radius. <laughs> right. Okay. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm glad you mentioned the group theatre there because that was such a great venue here in Belfast, oh, wasn't yes. it? Oh yes, yes. The group theatre, it, it was. You know, the memories I even have, I mean, it's, it's proper title, as you probably know, was the uh, uh, Minor Theatre, or Minor Hall, uh, Ulster Hall. Yes, yeah. And uh, uh, we used to, uh, uh, what, what would have happened? We would have finished a show on the Saturday night. Now, our shows ran for nearly six months. Wow. Oh, yeah, at the time. And uh, it used to be amazing because the people, uh, there were the same people in every Saturday night. They just came, you know, and they loved it. I mean, of course, Jimmy changed so much and yes, got on. Yeah. And uh, it, it was it was like a club, nearly, yeah. you know. And uh, so anyway, uh, we, we we thoroughly enjoyed this. But we finished on the Saturday night. And on the Sunday morning, uh, there used to be a hotel at the back of the city hall called the Imperial Hotel. Yes. Yeah. And we went there first thing Sunday morning. And the... Uh, New script would have come up on the Enterprise. That's not what Jimmy called it, but it came up on the Enterprise <laughs> uh, that morning. It was collected, and uh, it was a man called John McDonald okay. that was writing the scripts. And we started, and you literally sat with what appeared to be your script and a pen, and a pen, and he stroked out, and you wrote, and he stroked, and you wrote, and you wrote, and your head was buzzing. Yeah. And uh, by the Monday the script would have been sort of, you know, together, and we opened on the Tuesday week. Right, okay, wow. And that's, uh, uh, but that's actually quite good. Well, it was great, because now th that's the way uh, I work with the boys, you yes, know, but course. we'll come yes, to that, yeah. I'm sure. But, um, no, so it, it, was, it was go, go, go. It was like old rep and uh, an amazing experience. As the years went on, you were performing, you had a job, you were a mother as well. Yeah. And sadly, you lost your husband at an early age as well, didn't you? I did. Um, uh, what actually, <laughs> if I'm laughing, but <laughs> I'm not laughing because I lost my husband, but what actually happened was I was married in 1971 and we were supposed to go back into the theatre. Uh, we, we, we had a break of a month mm -hmm. every year and uh, we were supposed to be going back into the theatre at the beginning of August. And that was the year that internment came in. So my husband and I had been married in the June 
here we were sitting in our, it was called a flat in those days, not an apartment, uh, because to be near the theatre, every penny piece that we had was in this flat because we thought, I mean, it was just gorgeous. Anyway, uh, my poor husband who worked in Larn, he was willing to drive up and down every day and Bremen and Turnman came in and everywhere went dark. Yeah. And uh, that was, well, it was a dreadful time for everybody. Yeah. But the city, uh, and I think uh, Derry did the same, I mean, it just went, that was it. So we didn't ever, we never were back in the group theatre again in that form. Okay. Because Jimmy, <coughs> he had actually, sort of pre that, had started to do his one man shows yeah, and things. Yeah. And uh, probably he maybe realised, you know, because uh, we were his responsibility. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, then, as I say, about two years later, I had my own production, <laughs> my daughter Patricia, mm -hmm. and uh, we still weren't really back, uh, but then it started to perk up, mm -hmm. and uh, things like the, uh, prior to that there'd been, well, to my knowledge, very little television yeah. uh, drama, yeah. uh, it was all brought, you know, and uh, then we did uh, The Billy Plays. Yes, of course, yes. And uh, The Billy Plays was really the beginning of me, uh, you know, coming yeah. coming back again yes. and uh, into theatre. And then, unfortunately, uh, my husband died uh, of uh, an aneurysm, very, obviously, very suddenly, whenever Patricia had just turned 10. Right. So uh, it, it was a bit of a, a bad time, you know. But <laughs> and I suppose through the, the dark days of the troubles and stuff, people still wanted to be entertained oh, here, absolutely. didn't they? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because what I did, uh, I actually went back uh, into. Uh, uh, when, sorry, a uh, beg your pardon. When Patricia was born, we moved to Larn, back back to Larn again, and uh, I rejoined the, uh, the drama circle. And I mean, we did two and three productions a year, and and then I did a lot of uh, well quite a bit of stand up. Don't like to it, but I, I you know, th yes, that's yeah. a, I, I was I was never it's a double negative. I was never not <laughs> right. uh, doing something, you know, because I, I uh, oh no, it would have been awful. I just wasn't in the theatre in, in Belfast. Let's talk about Ma and uh, give my headpiece. How did all that come about? Because you started off in the two ceasefires and a, a wedding thing. Yes, didn't you? that yes. was the, the thing. Well, actually, how that started. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but many years ago, there was this show on television, and it was out, went out live, and it was called the show. Yes. yes. And it was in the Joker Club, and it was in the up in the old, um, you know, Balmoral. Yes, the King's Hall. Uh -huh, and the King's Hall. Side, yeah. And I worked with the late Bernie Sweeney in it. Mm -hmm. Bernie was my hero. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that man. <laughs> <laughs> we, really, and we got on so well together. You know, we we, we played well. You know, together, the boys ended up then writing our little uh, scripts. Yes, yeah. And I got to know them quite well, and they were all lovely young lads who were still, uh, well, I think they were just, they were beyond Queens, but they studied law and they were all doing wonderful things. But they were very dedicated and they worked very, very hard. So, uh, sometime after that, I got awfully bad with dates and things like that. But sometime after that, they Tim. Mm -hmm rang me and said that they were doing uh, at that time they were doing a radio yes. show on those those characters mm -hmm. so he asked me would i join and uh, play the part of ma and yeah. that which i did on radio which was terrific and tim uh, i tell this story so often but uh tim used to they all used to say oh it'd be great you know if something came of it and blah blah of course we thought it'd be wonderful and each year uh note i said year on a christmas card tim would say things like maybe this year olivia <laughs> you know i think that was, no, it was only about a couple of years and then uh i got a card from olivia it's happening and uh that's when we went and we did the pilot mm -hmm. Uh, which was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. And I have been fortunate enough to be Ma ever since. That's over 20 years ago now. And <laughs> uh, what about the character of Ma? Because she's totally different from you. Her hair's different, her makeup's <laughs> different, her outfits are different. Did you have much say into how Ma would look on screen? No. Well, yes and no. <clears throat> I, uh, well, 
I think the boys write their, they define their characters mm -hmm. so well that uh, it, it's uh, it's not difficult. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yes, and yeah. obviously they had thought of me as Ma, yeah. and uh, the same with you know all, all the other characters. And uh, if no, I think you fell into it quite. A now I, I would say that if I look back on some of the ones you know towards the beginning, they were very exaggerated. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yes. It, it took a while for us to. You know, to fall in, you know, yes, and yeah, not just, yeah. and uh, I like myself get me and everybody. But now uh, it, it's reached the thing where uh, you actually, I actually learn it as ma. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean, yes, and, yeah. Uh, the boys are, are they're quite forgiving uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if, you, if you say, look, I, I, ma's, ma's not comfortable saying that uh, the way it's written they're they're very good at saying well uh michael directs uh, uh, saying well try it another way but i mean if it doesn't work you go straight back to yeah. uh, but sometimes when you do try it another way you realize yourself that no that they are right mm -hmm. you know yes, yeah. but so it's it makes it an awful lot easier and yeah. um, the ma character uh but uh, it, it's funny over the years uh uh, the, the Northern Ireland people have been so kind to us yeah. and so I, mean, I have been told I've been stopped in the street and I have been told things that I never should have <laughs> been told in my life <laughs> about marriages and about what their husband's doing or not doing or things and I'm standing there as Olivia yeah. and they're talking to me as Ma and a very good friend or something walks up past and says, I'll live in, and I go, oh, and they can hear what I mean. Yes, and, yeah. and some of the people had an awful habit of grabbing you, yeah. you know, and you know that thing know, of yes, holding yes, on to yeah. you and being really intimate, yeah. you know. And, and as I say, I've heard things that honestly, I mean, I could make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of my TV highlights to this day uh -huh. was doing a scene with you guys, um, and I got to do it in, in the Divis studio, the Divis Flats, and right. BBC Blackstaff. Uh -huh. um, and um, to this day, I will always remember being on set in Ma's oh, front thank room. You. And that's it was great right. to do. Uh -huh. I know we've got a photograph they're probably putting up on the screen now of it, but it was great to do. Will we see a new series anytime soon? Oh, I would love it. Yeah. I would hope so. Uh, all I can say, and I'm not being, you know, is that uh, we have heard that maybe uh, there will be something, you know, coming up, uh, you know, quite soon. But uh, it's not written in stone yet. <laughs> Uh, it's probably not written yet. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I do know that David Hull has got the dates out for next year's theatre oh, yes. tour already, oh, yeah. so he has. Yeah, so you will be out. back on the road next oh, year. Oh, we'll definitely, definitely be back on the road uh, at, towards the end of February and all of March. And I know already uh, uh, one of the places that come to is Larne. I know already uh, a lot of the places are booking up really well. So, folks. Book soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some of the other people you've met over the years. I wanted to talk to you about being in the movie with uh, Shirley MacLaine. And you did a scene with Shirley, didn't you? In that uh, well, film? Uh, no, it was a very, very, <laughs> very short scene I had with her. Uh, but she... Uh, this was the closing of the ring, wasn't it? The closing, yes. I beg your pardon, closing yes. of the ring, uh, 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 directed by uh, Sir uh, Richard uh, Attenborough. Attenborough. Yes, yeah. Amazing wee man. I'll tell you a story about him. But anyway, uh, no, I just said, I really was literally like walking through and, you know, and uh, I, I think her bark is probably worse than her bite, if you know that yeah, expression. Yeah. But she was sitting and the, the fag going like this here all the time and uh, the eyes, you know, and, but she was watching. You can see her watching everything under her eyes, you know, yeah. and uh, she did not take fools gladly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, she... I think her reputation sort of goes before, you know what yeah. I mean? But I was delighted. I mean, I was scared stiff, yeah. <laughs> but actually when it, it happened, it was perfectly all right, you know? And uh, so I hate to disillusion people, you know? There were other people who had scenes with her that maybe, mm, but <laughs> my experience. And, uh, but I've been, very, I've been very lucky, really lucky with the people I've met. And we mentioned Lord Attenborough there as well. Oh yes, it was so funny because the day I went for my audition, it was, uh, I was actually appearing in Portadown that night in uh, Gimhead Peace. Right, yes, yeah. 
and it came about four, I think my audition was supposed to be about two, it came about four o'clock, I still hadn't been seen, I thought what do I do, I mean I had to be, I looked out, it had started to snow, I was just sitting there ready to cry and eventually anyway I was taken in and here he is, he's sitting behind the desk and he just jumps up like this here and he calls everybody my darling and my you know he's terribly yeah. like this here and he took a run at me <laughs> <laughs> and he put his two arms around me and he squeezed me and went like this here uh -huh. with me and I thought oh it's going to be one of those yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> and back he went again and he kept looking up saying oh my darling and he, he then discussed the part and all which was lovely and uh, oh he says you're so cuddly and up he got again but i realized afterwards what it was because i'm so tiny mm. he's so, so tiny, tiny yes. there'd be very few women he would actually be able to exactly, do that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he took full advantage of it and i was delighted <laughs> Oh, do you know, the very first time I ever met him, I was so excited to meet him that I, I ran up to him and I said how great he was in Jurassic Park. And yes. we had this chat about Jurassic Park. And then he went off to do a speech. And he was up in this podium doing a speech. I think it would be a cinema or something. And uh, when he came off the podium, he walked down the steps. And I was at the bottom of the podium. And he threw his arms around me, gave me a hug and walked off. And people said to me, why did Lord Attenborough hug you at the bottom of the stairs? I don't know. And to this day, I still don't know why. Well, it, it, it would have been. He obviously liked you and he was he was a lovely man. And another thing I really admired him for, the biggest scene that I did have was at, it was in the telephone or outside the telephone box. And it was the scene where the boy was ringing America, uh, you know, and being told yes, yeah. about the ring. It was really quite a, a sensitive ring. But uh, they had rain machines, they had everything there. And it was that night, it was a night shoot. And we were all in like, um, it's very glamorous as you know, in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all in bin bags, yeah. uh, you know, up around our legs and then raincoats and things on the top. And these enormous big rain machines. But in the evening, didn't the heavens open? And it was a deluge, but he sat in his little chair, as director's chair, with his hood and every, and the water dripping off him. And that man, I thought, now it'll be a second I'll do th this scene tonight. I mean, but no, he was there. Yes, and, yeah. and seemingly, he was there on every scene during it. Brilliant, yeah. You see, I, that's gorgeous. And he was probably into his 80s then as oh, well, well, wasn't he? Well into his 80s Well into his 80s, well into his 80s yeah, you yeah. know. And, uh, but he was a... He was jolly. He reminded me of Santa Claus. And know? he was Santa Claus. He was. He was. Well, I know. Actually, when, he, but when I eventually saw that, I thought, well, that's what I've been thinking all along, yeah. you know. And, uh, oh, no, it was such a professional and such a privilege. Now, you've won a few awards over the years as well, and I suppose the big one was given the MBE. Yes, I was very honoured uh, to receive the MBE because uh, I got it for my uh, work in the theatre, you know, to, to drama, but I also got it uh, for um, my work with Northern Ireland Hospice. Uh, and uh, it, it's a great privilege to, to, to work there. And uh, I love it. And uh, I can't say enough about it. And we need money, by the way, folks, always, always, always. And uh, I was very honoured that that was uh, the reason uh, that I, I, I got it. I'm a vice president. Brilliant. Olivia, it's been great talking to you, as always. We look forward to seeing you back on the road with Give My Head Peace next year, and let's hope it's back on TV very thank soon you. as well. Olivia Nash, thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. <laughs>